Welcome to the Vision Pro, Apple's most complex piece of hardware yet, and most reflective. So complicated that we'll need more than one video to tackle it. So we'll speedrun disassembly for a not so normal teardown. I can't be the only one getting Ready Player One vibes. I mean, ski goggles with an ethereal blue glow, uncanny valley avatars, check and double check. Despite Apple's obsession with AR, the pass-through video is easily the weakest element of this experience. While spatial video and the immersive experiences are pretty darn cool, the real world is experienced through a slightly laggy 2010s webcam? And don't get me started on the external display's attempted at eyes. We'll get to that later. For now, the extremely specific customization of these headbands and light seal make this a single player experience. But I'm not here to play games. It's time to dig in and tear down. First up, the power cord, which turns to unlock, and is, I believe, the only way to turn the headset off, unless you ask Siri. The cable disconnects at the other end, too, with the help of a SIM eject tool. The battery pack is 362 grams, and I'm thankful that's not on my face, even if it would even out the distribution a bit. The knit band is a pretty impressive piece of textile wizardry, and pops right off at the stems with this nice latch. Our custom-fit, hand-packed headsets come with face cushions in size W, light seals in 21W and 33W. The stems come off with just a bit more effort, and another jab with a SIM eject tool. Bye-bye speakers. Now it's time for my ultimate teardown challenge. I've been tearing down for just about 11 years now, and this might be my Everest. Massive curved sheet of glass with zero point of entry, challenge accepted. But I'm gonna need a better heat source. A thick plastic film protects the glass and stymies prying. And some overzealous heating may have singed the interior light seal, but the iFlex manages to sneak under the glass. Luckily, the display isn't pushed right up against this layer, and I can slice through unhindered. Removing the glass reveals another screw-free layer. This one is slick black, and after sneaking under a camera cutout, I don't think it's the screen, because honestly, I would have broken it by now. Suction handle, some more prying, and for my reward, sure enough, yet another unlaminated layer over top the exterior screen. But hey, just for fun, does this thing still work? Yes, it- Whoa, okay. What happened here? This display is covered in tiny ridges that are actually lenticular lenses. You may recognize lenticular lenses from postcards or novelty playing cards. The motion effect is achieved by weaving two images together. One side of the lens only displays image A, image B appears from the other side. This method can also be used to create a three-dimensional effect called stereoscopy. Each eye sees a different angle of the same subject, creating a three-dimensional image. Unfortunately, interlacing two images in a single display effectively halves the available horizontal pixels, and they may well be using more than two images. Adding insult to injury, there's a fairly narrow effective range for this trick. Enter the mysterious second panel. Turns out this little filter has a set of lenticular lenses and a brightness-enhancing film. The former appears to make the display's image a bit wider and less wonky, and the film ensures the 3D eyes are only visible from the ideal angle. Each layer helps improve the render, but they each knock down the brightness levels too. With that mystery solved, let's sleuth our way into this device. Turns out the lightly singed interior fabric is secured by plastic clips, albeit stubborn ones. So I can pry the edges and around each lens. Now we've got access to glorious screws. Four T5 Torx screws start us off in our display and lens quest, and sure enough, the assembly is almost free. Tape, screws, bracket, cable, slide, tape, screw, bracket, and again, and one more time. Ugh. Then it's as easy as sliding each lens assembly off the rail. Now, how about these displays? Lots of screws, just, just so many screws. Another bracket, more screws, and finally a bit of glue, and presto. A curiously convex slash concave lens and an itty bitty display. Where to go from here? It looks like greener pastures are hiding under the external display after all. Next time I pry one of these open, I'd love to try popping out the whole assembly. But for now, heat and prying at just the right angle let us peel up this ridge screen. Oh, and hello, more cables, which means more tape, more screws, more brackets, and wow, just so many tiny connectors. And then I get to do it all over again. Tape, screws, bracket, and just one connector. Okay, let's try these three screws and see what they loosen up. Ah, a camera array. Disconnecting a couple connectors and popping it out reveals what might be a camera alignment shim or a stiffener of some kind. And voila, some cameras. 
It's hard not to be daunted by this interior, especially with these itty bitty nuts. So I'll pick up the pace a bit. Screw, 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 bracket, screw, 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 bracket. Connector, 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 connector times two. Connector, 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 connector. Screw, 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 screw. And finally, a stubborn connector. The board is canted at this nice angle thanks to a hefty flexible PCB ribbon. Oodles of tech left in this headset, but I'm headed for the whisper quiet fans. For Four screws apiece, and these nifty Needeck blowers, along with their sweet rubber ducting, are free as the wind. For my last trick, a seemingly innocuous little motor that does a big job. This little stepper motor turns a lead screw to park the lenses in the perfect spot for your eyeballs. Aside from magnetic part replacement and clever SIM eject functions, not very much of this teardown was effortless. It was actually really effortful. Tons of convoluted construction, finicky fasteners, and a bevy of brackets made for a virtual nightmare. But hey, the battery pack is about as replaceable as you can get. Now, if we could just get it to run third-party battery packs, but that's a complication for later. Stick around to see just how deep this rabbit hole goes, and keep on fixing.